Evening everyone and welcome back to another Pilot Stud video. Today I've got some fantastic news from the PMDG team from their 737 coming to Xbox to continue progress on the 777. On top of that we've been updated by Mr Hans Hartman regarding the Payware ATR. There's plenty to get into so without further delay let me hop into today's Microsoft Flight Simulator news. We're going to kick it off with news from the PMDG team. Yesterday, which at the time of filming was the 22nd of March, Mr. Robert Rodazzo updated us all on various parts of PMDG's work on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to split it up into five or so segments and you can skip to the bit you want to via the chapters below. First off, we'll be talking about the 737 family as a whole on PC. Many of you will already be aware of this, but the 737 from the 737-600 to the 737-900 have all been made Sim Update 12 compatible. Despite some issues with beta, there were some issues with parking brakes. The PMDG team have been very busy and basically ensured fantastic continuity with the 737 on Microsoft Flight Simulator. I would expect nothing less from the PMDG team. Now we move over to the big news. Of course, the main feature of Sim Update 12 on Xbox was the introduction of WASM support. The web assembly Assembly module, which is what WASM stands for, should allow more complex add-ons onto Microsoft Flight Simulator's second platform, the wonderful Xbox. PMDG have always been very clear, they want they want their 737 on Xbox and they've already started making the preparations to move it over. Now we do get a fascinating insight into PMDG's plans with Xbox, so let me pop it up on the screen and talk about the major points. First off, as it says, as they say on the second paragraph, PMDG have no experience with the Xbox process for obvious reasons and therefore it's not going to be an instantaneous release. I said this on the other day's video, developers are not going to be able to simply port over their product straight to Xbox and release it for everyone to try. There has to be, uh, and to quote PMDG here, there has to be a test and validation process. They're also thinking about the future, they're thinking about the introduction of the EFB, the Universal Flight Tablet, and Navdata or AIRAC updates in the future. So as you'd expect, there is a holistic approach from PMDG here. They do expect to take some time with this process, so they offer no release date but it's definitely not going to be tomorrow. In my opinion, I imagine this will be a month or two. PMDG are going to make every effort to get this out as soon as possible, but they are limited to the fact that this is a completely new platform for them and they want to get it right. They don't want to dumb this down at all. They want the 737 on Xbox to be virtually the same as the 737 on PC. Finally, we're going to be talking about the EFB and the 777. Kicking it off with the EFB, progress here is still a bit blurry in my opinion. PMDG do say that they are beginning to experience a slight bit of joy with respect to progress on the EFB. Of course there has been months of delays and issues with the EFB, it has definitely been a bigger project than PMDG and of course we all thought it would be. So still some delays here and of course they are hesitant to give us any certain release date or release timeline, but it is a priority for them. It seems that Sim Update 12 and all the stuff regarding WASM has allowed PMDG to, to trundle on at a slightly better pace. But still no screenshots or videos of the bad boy in action. I guess we'll have to wait and see.
And finally with the 777, they do say that development work on the 777 is sailing along at a great pace, that is a direct quote, and while they don't offer any screenshots or videos of the 777 just yet, they do say that they are really pleased with how this project is coming along, and they cannot wait to share more information regarding the 777, I know so many of you are looking forward to it, and of course, PMDG will be releasing the 777 for both PC and Xbox. Some wonderful news from the PMDG team, they've done an awesome job. You can read the full forum post via the link down below. Definitely one of my favourite development teams out there. Now we're going to swiftly move over to the ATR, the Asobo ATR to be exact. This is a payware project that will be released on April the 25th and it will feature the ATR 42600 and 72600. The lead developer here is Hans Hartmann who of course has got a team under his wing and the great help of Asobo. And on the latest Microsoft Float Simulator development stream, we get a fascinating insight into the avionics and system side of this French-Italian regional turboprop airliner. You can find the stream linked down below and you want to head into about 1 hour and 5 minutes into the stream and you'll be treated to a wonderful 20 minute preview of the systems of the ATR. I have to say it is looking superb. You have to remember with this project of course it is coming very soon but Hans Hartmann and his team are actually being actively helped out by real world ATR pilots and actually the ATR company themselves. This certainly shows it is set to be one of the most realistic aircraft out there. I would recommend you tune into the stream to learn more, but we take a good look into the avionics. Hans Hartmann especially shows off the multi-display panel and an ATR specific feature known as the virtual control panel. To quickly go through this, this is part of the user interface that is controlled by a physical panel just under the FMS. This display allows you to change things like your radios, that's both comm and navigation radios, as well as to control moving map features. I really like how consolidated it is within the ATR, it seems to be a really slick airliner. It's a feature I haven't seen on any other aircraft before, and as they say in the Twitch stream, it is ATR specific, but it does look really good. Now, Hans Hartmann's been rather clever, or I should say he and his team have been rather clever. You might notice that the control panel for the virtual control panel, a bit of a mouthful there, is below the FMS. That means if you want to change it, you're going to have to look down towards your right or left side, meaning you're not going to, to get a direct view out of the window. If you're changing your radios and you're close to the ground, that is probably the last thing you want to be doing, looking down. So the ATR team have made it so you can click on the multi-display panel and change it all there. That's not like real life, but it does make it a lot more intuitive to use. I would recommend you check the 20 minute long part of the Microsoft Flight Simulator Twitch stream to learn more. A fantastic tour of the cockpit, it is looking really good and I am a massive fan of the virtual control panel. I think I've said panel enough now but I'd also like to point out you can see synthetic vision turned on and that does look really cool although a bit pixelated. I personally am really excited for this aircraft. The ATR is being labelled as Expert Series 1 so it is going to be the first quote expert aircraft in a Sobo series and that to me means that a Sobo are intending to go down into the future and release more high fidelity aircraft. I think that's a very exciting thing. It makes me and I'm sure it makes you very happy. This aircraft will be released on the 25th of April. It will be payware, no exact information on pricing yet and it will be coming to both PC and Xbox. Something to get really excited for. On that note, thank you for watching Watching. Have a great day. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you around. Bye bye.